Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the designing concepts. So there are majorly eight, sorry, nine different concepts which we are, which we will be following while we are designing guys. So these are some set of fundamental software designing concepts. We will be calling them. Okay. These are the set of fundamental designing concepts. Those are nothing but abstraction, hiding of something architecture. So you should follow some architecture. So if there are any patterns like previous code, you can use it reusability. Modularity is nothing but dividing into modules, hiding information. So if there is any private information or any kind of important information, you should hide it. Functional independence. It should be depending on one after the other. Refinement. Refinement. So the code should be refined. Okay. So refactoring. The code should also be refactored. Designing. Design classes. So you need to design multiple classes for as per the requirements. Okay, so we'll be discussing in detail guys. I'll be just giving you some introduction. Then we'll be going through the points or okay. I'll be go first going through the points. Then we'll be giving the introduction guys. Okay, first abstraction. I hope everyone knows what is an abstraction guys. So in a, in object oriented programming, we are having this concept of abstraction. abstraction. So in that process, we will be hiding some unwanted data, right? So which is not relevant to show, we'll be hiding those things so that the model will be easy to understand. So the same concept will be applying here also. So simply we can say that hiding of code or data. So abstraction simply means to hide the details, to reduce the complexity, to increase the efficiency or quality. So different levels of abstractions are necessary and must be applied at each stage of design process. So errors that are presented can be removed efficiently. Okay. So to remove errors also, these abstractions will be helpful guys. Okay. So it is applied for functional abstraction in the functional methods in a data abstraction for a representing data structures and to represent the data control abstraction to the flow of the data. So it will be applied there guys. Okay. So similarly architecture. So architecture is nothing but designing a software. So it is the structure or organization of program program components like modules. So there is an interaction and structure of data that are used used by the components. So the components are nothing but used to represent major system elements and their iterations, interactions, sorry. Okay. So basically the architectures are nothing but there are multiple architectures guys. One of the most popular is nothing but data driven architecture or data centered architecture. So in data centered architecture, we will be having the data in the center and all the clients will be around him. Okay. So this kind of model will be working for a high users system. When there are multiple users accessing the data frequently, then we'll be going for that kind of architecture, right? So in that way, according to your program or according to your modules, you will be deciding the architecture which you are going to use. Okay. So I hope everyone got some idea about architecture. Similarly patterns. Okay. So basically whenever, okay, let us go through the theory first, a repeated form in shortcut, we can say the pattern simply means a repeated form or design in which the shape is repeated several times to form a pattern. So the pattern in the design process means repetition of a solution to a common recurring problem with a certain context. Okay. So basically you can simply say that pattern is nothing but which is repeating guys. So when you are designing something, there could be multiple components. The pattern will be repeating. So in the same way, they will be, will be writing again and again. So in those situations, it is always better to create a class and to inherit the properties instead of writing them again and again. So th these kind of things will also be analyzed in this uh, pattern guys. Okay. So after that we are having modularity. Remember that this is one of the most important concept guys. Okay. So remember that. Okay. This, with the graph, I'll be explaining you guys. Okay. So what is modularity guys? So whenever you got a big project, you will be dividing it into multiple modules so that it will be clear for you for development and everything. Okay. So the modules are divided in such a way that so if you divide the modules, if you increase the number of modules, like normally this project should have only two mod three modules, but you divide it into 10 modules, then what will be the issue guys? The cost will increase. What if you reduce only it into two modules, even then the cost will increase because you are, you need some employees or some kind of experts to manage those modules guys, right? So basically the graph will be in this way. Number of modules as number of modules increases, the cost will also increase as the number of modules decreases. Sorry, as the cost decreases, number of modules also increases. So you can say in this way, the graph will be in this way, guys. So in the center, there will be a minimum cost region. 
like the cost will be minimum and the number of modules will also be minimum so we need to select that case okay so so this graph is showing as modules increasing the cost is also increasing and this shows as cost is decreasing module numbers are increasing okay okay so the thing is that initially if the modules are really less than the required modules the cost will be high okay so in that way it will work guys okay okay so now let us go through the explanation which i have written here so modularity simply means to divide the system or project into smaller parts to reduce the complexity of the system project so in this in this in in the same way modularity in design means to divide the to subdivide a system into smaller parts so that the parts or testing the parts can be create or creating the parts will be really easy and designing construction will also be easy so i explained you the graph so i hope everyone is now clear with the graph hence always select as the medi medial module so you always need to select in between these things like if, even if you select at this point it is also a best option but it could be better if you select anywhere in between but it's not mandatory it's not uh, preferred to select outside the boundary guys okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea okay so now let us go through the next thing that is nothing but information hiding okay so basically whenever you are designing a project you need to hide some information guys which is not relevant for the user so basically every information is not shown to user right so there could be some information which you want to hide from user so those things should be managed in a proper way so information hiding simply means to hide the information the information so that it cannot be accessed by unwanted parties so that is nothing but users i am saying or any kind of hackers also you can assume okay similarly functional independent so it is nothing but independent methods as a project has multiple functions or methods sorry for that they all should be independent to each other hence designing coding and testing could be easy okay so the meaning of this is they should be loosely coupled guys so we are not saying that they should be completely independent or 100% independent they can have some partial relation between both so the main thing of this statement is no, is nothing what if you run this code it should work if you run this code it should work if you run these both codes it should work as a module so in that way so basically you are not saying that there are not having relation but they are loosely coupled so loosely coupled is nothing but the relation is only partial like even without the relation also the project or the modules will work but with relation they will be a bit better in that way okay so refinement refinement is nothing but once you hear refinement you will be going through the subject like crude oil right so you will be going through crude oil so they will be doing refining of the oils and everything right so in the same way here we will be removing the impurities so here we will we will be calling impurities as a bugs or errors guys so refinement simply means to find the impurities if present and increase the quality to increase the quality we will be doing this re refinement so refinement is very necessary to find out any kind of bugs slash errors so if a present will be optimizing optimization is done here okay similarly refactoring so many of the students do confuse for this guys refactoring is nothing but when you wrote the code for the first time you may not have some kind of ideas right so you you will be thinking that this code will be executed only once so i'll be writing it here so similarly that code you wrote somewhere else and you again thought like that only so in three four places you thought like that so now in refactoring so you'll be observing these kind of patterns like repetition codes unwanted codes and everything so you will be removing them and making them easier and faster to access or some students or some companies even do refactoring like they will restart the whole coding process if it is a small project they will be restarting the co whole coding process because they are having already the ready made code right so by observing that they will be making the new code so that it will be more efficient okay refactoring simply means to reconstruct something in such a way that it does not affect the behavior or any other factor so it should not affect any other factors factors whatever you give input it should come the same output but the inner code structure and everything may be changed okay so refactoring in software design means the reconstructing the design to reduce the complexity and to make it simple without affecting the behavior of the function okay so after that designing classes so system classes process classes and there are multiple classes which we can design okay so this is all about okay so i hope everyone got clear idea about designing concepts right okay so in the next lecture we will be going through some basic design model guys so in the next unit we will be going in detail about design model the architectures everything we will be discussing guys okay 
So in the next lecture, we'll be going through design model. Okay. So let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thanks for watching.